Troy Deeney, thanks so much for being in town and coming to see us. No, thank it's you for having me. It's appreciate much, it. Much appreciated. I'd usually open a, an interview with a footballer, re referencing their previous few games, how yeah. their current form is going on. But two weeks ago, Birmingham City beat Swansea 4-3, and that's yeah. my team. So okay. I just wanted to nip that in the bud. Just right? Kill it dead straight away. <laughs> kill it dead yeah. straight. Um, but <laughs> you've just launched the second season of Dini Talks, your, your, your podcast where you yep. have the best and brightest from the world of football <laughs> and outside as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, how's that going? And also because it's, it's very interesting to see footballers who are getting involved in broadcasting before the ends of their career. So what was the, mm. the motivation for getting started quite early yeah. with this? Um, I've always been interested in people, is the biggest one. I, I like to listen to what people have to say, different points of view. Um, yeah, it's always just been something I found fascinating. Uh, people watching is one of my favourite things to do. If I go out with the missus, I'll just sit and watch people and have my own little game of Sims in my head, you know what I mean? Like, oh, what does he do, what does she do? Um, we did Deanie Talks 1 in lockdown. It was out of boredom, really. Just jumped on Zoom, phoned a few friends and had a, had a little chat, um, that went really well. And then now it's like, everyone's doing a podcast, and they? everyone's got a podcast, but I feel like everyone's podcasts are very specific, whether they're sport, whether they're like conspiracy theories, whatever it might be. I just wanted to find out who that person is behind the name. So if you know Troy Deeney, you'll have a different representation, whether you watch football or don't watch football. So give the person to her, the platform to have a safe space and speak and, and hopefully show who and what they are. You spent most of your career playing in the Premier League, mm -hmm. obviously now at the um, top of the Premier League, Arsenal, yeah. and when you were at Watford, obviously you had the, the back and forth with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do Arsenal have the cojones to win the Premier League? <laughs> uh, of course they do. Uh, the missus who's just over there, she's an Arsenal fan, so uh, yeah, we're, uh, I'm hearing it every single day at the moment because it's Arsenal on top, so I've had five years of hearing how bad it is and now they're, they're gloating so as they should do um i think you know the game we get the two games against man city are the games that obviously are the difficult ones um if they can maneuver through those and still keep the gap i don't see why they can't um it's going to sound a bit disrespectful but i don't mean it to be it's kind of like a leicester year like everybody else is going through transitional periods so it's the best time for arsenal to uh, to go on and win and we just had Matt Lucas on the podcast who's a massive Arsenal fan and his, his understanding that this is a good time for them to go and uh, I believe that yeah they, they've got a good chance but the two the two games against City will be the ones that decide it. I think Hart says Arsenal for most people doesn't it but then mm -hmm. Head probably still says Man City because yeah. they've just got they've won more titles in, in recent yeah. memories. It's just whether they can get through but also you've got to remember Jesus is coming back, that's a big, big plus for Arsenal. So if he can come back and recreate the form that he was doing beforehand, I think that's a, that's a game changer. Like I like Eddie, I think Eddie's a, he's a good player, but he's a, he's, a, he's a finisher, he's a proper fox in the box. He doesn't allow Arsenal to move the way they were earlier on in the season because he'll, he'll stay through the middle of the pitch. So um, no, I, I think it's a good game, um, especially the one with, with City tonight. Try not to time stamp it, I don't know when this is coming out, but uh, when uh, they play City tonight, I think if they can come out of that unbeaten, it's a, it's a huge game. In terms of um, our tech, for instance, we live in an age now where managers are given hardly any time. You, mm -hmm. know, you played for Watford, for instance, so the turnover of managers there is, 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 is very kind of constant. Yeah. Arteta had a really bad, poor spell at Arsenal when he, you know, they won one in 10 or 12, yeah. I think. But no, look at them this season. Um, what are your take? What, what's your take on on the way managers are treated and the whole idea of trust the process, which mm -hmm. Arteta was constantly talking about? Yeah, the, the trust the process is always going to be something that works because you're 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 trying to get to an end goal. Um, you can disagree on the ways of getting to that end goal. That's normally how managers get sacked. But I think when you're as consistent in the messaging as Arteta was, you, you're always going to be. Um, powerful and strong and, and everyone bought into it. I think the, the big things that he did, Ozil out, Aubameyang out, Lacazette out, all in hindsight are, are wonderful things. But at the time, there were huge, huge calls. But I think they changed the way everybody around the building went, oh, Ozil's gone, I could be next. So like fall in line and that's kind of what, what you need. And um, you know, they've got a talented squad. 
I think Trossard was a great buy as well. But I think um, when I look at when I look at Arteta, I just think, yeah, you you get it. Like he's his finger on the pulse. I bet he knows everything that's happening from the under eights all the way up at Arsenal. Like I just I just get that feeling that he's in control, and I think that's what. Arsenal and Man United have needed for a long time. I think United have, have started to get that now. They go through that process, so I'd expect them two years' time to be challenging properly. I think with Arteta as well, those players he shipped out that you mentioned, Ozil, Lacazette, Aubameyang, mm. big personalities yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. And Mourinho used to have a thing where he'd go into a club and in that summer he would oust a big player. I think he did it with Juan Mata when he yeah, when yeah. he took over for the second or third time at Chelsea. Mm-hmm. There's a lot to be said for, and people look at that as oh, you're just trying to swing your dick around and, and, and kind of <laughs> yeah, and, and kind of. I didn't know we could talk like that. Yeah, uh, yeah, you can, say, you can say <laughs> you, yeah, you can you can say whatever you want. <laughs> um, um, there's no right or wrong answer or filter on this. <laughs> um, that a lot of people did see that as, as literally yeah. dick swinging from from Mourinho, and probably did see that that from Arteta, but. It, I guess it can, and you've probably seen the same in, in your dressing rooms as well, but it sends a message subconsciously to the rest of the squad that of course it does. doesn't, doesn't well, matter. It depends how it's done, though, because if it is a dick swinging contest, then it only works if you're winning. When you start losing, people start remembering what you've done before. I think, I think especially with Arteta and Aubameyang, there was, well, I know personally, there was like a few instances where he broke the rules and wasn't on time and things like that. And I think we saw that in um, All or Nothing. So I think he tried to like give him enough rope to hang himself, basically, where you're like, look, tried, I've tried, now, bang, you're gone. And as soon as he was gone, I think that just showed the rest of the group, like, wow, like, doesn't matter if you're scoring, doesn't matter if you're top line, doesn't matter if you're captain, you're, you're out of here. And um, he's all about respect, I, I think, in any team sport. You just look around here, if you're not doing your job properly, don't matter how good these are on the camera, you're not doing the job properly and vice versa. So we need everyone to, you know, understand their jobs and be accountable for their jobs and that's what I think good teams do. It got, seems like they've got good eggs in that squad now, for instance. With Ram- Everyone's a good egg when you're winning. You never hear about a bad egg when, you, when you're winning. That's so. an interesting perspective, actually. Because yeah. we, obviously Shaka seems like a reformed character now. Yeah, Granit's been great and I'm, and yeah. I'm buzzing for him. To be like totally honest with you, because he went through a lot of stick and obviously playing against him, he, he was never a bad player. He's, he's not a bad player, but I think he he like kind of fell on the sword a little bit in terms of being Arsenal captain. It was it was obviously his fault, and obviously I've been captain in, in tough times and, and go through that currently, obviously at Birmingham. But you you're the you're the focal point, so it's never like never looking at flair players. And, you know, you never see a flair player really get stick when they go through the bad times. But if you look at your captain or your centre half or your goalie, they'll be the ones who will be getting it. Like he's not good enough. Do you get what I mean? So you, you, it's part part and parcel of being a, a leader, I suppose. It's an interesting perspective upon it. And you've seen interesting about the, the manager uh, the aspect of it because I think I was watching a clip from Ashley Williams yesterday on yeah. um, the Vibe with Five show. I think it's it's owned by. Um, Real food now. Yeah, it's okay. part part of his um, broadcast. Oh, network. we're talking about uh, Nathan, Nathan Jones. Jones. Yeah, 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 yeah. And how I haven't actually seen that clip, but I've seen the headline of it. Yeah, and he talking about like Nathan Jones went into the Stoke dressing room where you've got people who've won like the Champions League or Bojan yeah. and Ryan Shawcross. People who played in the Premier League for years and immediately starts in an inferiority complex. And mm-hmm. Williams have, making have, the point. Yeah, I have heard that from a from a personal point of view. Like he wasn't great in regards to dealing with bigger players. Um, but I've seen that throughout the years, it, it happens. I, I don't transcribe to this, oh, he played in the Champions League. Okay, like, let's talk uh, Brojan. He wasn't a starter in the Champions League. He wasn't a main player at Barcelona. He was someone that came on and did well. Don't get me wrong, he's played Champions League, but I think when you start saying like you've played in the Prem for years, well, what's played in the Prem, like 20 games, 30 games? I say played in the Prem has to be over 100 games, personally. Have you played in the Champions League? Oh, was you a starter? What type of player was you? Was, do you get what I mean? Yeah. Then, then there's different conversations to be had because there's people that have played for freaking, I don't know, I'm trying to think of someone random, but real. Someone played for real and they've, they've qualified for Champions League. They've been Champions League qualified. Yeah. So does that person know more about football than... Nathan Jones, not necessarily. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. There's people that have played yeah. for Rangers and Celtic who have been 
not very good, who probably won't get into League One teams, but they're they now play Champions League. When you look at their resume, do you get what I mean? Yeah, I don't tra- I don't transcribe to that. I think it's about being humble enough. And from what I hear from from Nathan Jones, again, I've never worked with a man, never met him, so I don't want to be disrespectful, but not being humble enough to understand what kind of environment he's walking into, both at Stoke and uh, Southampton. Some of the bigger issues we've seen in football um, are still the most talked about yeah. um, areas of the game as well. This week we saw Jakob Bianco, the Czech Republic international, yeah. someone who has played in the Champions League for years, become arguably the most high profile player to come out as gay yeah, while, today, while, yeah. still, while still playing. Um, what do you think needs to happen for us to get to a point where a player within, say, the top four English divisions mm-hmm. who is still playing at the height of their game feels that it's a climate where they can be themselves and come well, out. Well, it is a climate for, for where you feel you can be, be brave enough to come out. Like, look at what Sam Smith's doing. He's, he's pushing the envelope as far as he wants to, so that's socially acceptable as well, isn't it? That no one's cancelling Sam Smith for the way he's dressing or any of these... Uh, antics that are going on in terms of where he's at with his, I wouldn't just say sexuality, but him in life and where he's at artistically. Um, so I think it is the climate for that. Um, honestly, it's on the individual, because you're yeah. going to get stick. Like, you, you are, like, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm just thinking of the way um, Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Tom yeah. Davis were spoken about by yeah. fans when, when they dressed but, flamboyantly but the thing is that, like that's that. just about yeah. the way that they're dressing, though. Like, Trust me, them boys, the boys are doing all right when it comes to getting getting females. They're not struggling. Yeah. So um, I just, but if they're not, they've said that they're not, they're not gay. So they're not gay, are they? Like, it's like we get into this really weird space now where if we fling enough shit, like it sticks, and everyone thinks that's in, like the right thing to do. But if someone's gay, so what? So what if mm. they're gay? It's not harming you, are they? So, so what, do, what does need to happen then? Like, nothing needs to happen, just those, those individuals that are gay need to feel comfortable to come out and do it. Football is a very um, selfish, look after, look after self, cutthroat industry. Put it in this perspective, I've got four strikers that play in my position. We train and try and compete against each other every day to get that shirt on a weekend, but that's my teammates. But every day we're going to war to battle it against each other. So I'm not going to say, oh, well done you, you scored a good goal. No, fuck, he scored, I've got to score too. That's just the way of the, of the beast. So in terms of like, for, them, for, for people who are gay to come out, like it, it's there. Honestly, I can tell you, people don't care. They just want to win. It's the same, same with like uh, any other industry in music. Is there people that are gay in music? Of course there is. It's just more freely accepted for people to come out. That's just where music has been because we've had the likes of Sir Alton John since friggin' what the eighties and probably people before that, but Alt- Alton is the one obviously I know personally. So um it's just a case of more people coming out, more people being uh comfortable doing that. You had um his name's got out of my mind, I had the, the kid from Blackpool came Jake out last Daniels, year. I Daniels, I think. Daniels, it? Yeah, 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 came yeah. out last year. You've got this fella now come out. So slowly coming. It's yeah. slowly coming because before that it was it was fashion. He was the only one who can really remember. So we, we're already on an upward trajectory. It feels like there's a there's an outcry that we should just have like 50 people go. Well, I'm gay, but what if they're not? We just got to come out and say that we're gay. Yeah. Like it does. It does. It's just it's just a little bit strange where the outcry. The, the space is there. And when those people, those individuals are more than comfortable to walk through, I'm sure football will accept with open arms. Fans and clubs need to take some brunt of the responsibility though, because um, just to play devil to advocate mm-hmm. you there, you could make a point that Jake Daniels mm-hmm. is an academy player at Blackpool. He's mm-hmm. not playing first team football. Yep. In the music industry, you're not met with, you're recording in a studio with other like-minded professionals. You don't have 20, 30,000 people looking mm-hmm. for any possible thing to... But you do you also for. have to go to the shop. You do also have to go to nightclubs. You do also have to perform at concerts. You do have to do walkthroughs. You have to do signings. So you are, once you come out as gay, you are also not expecting a little bit, but you're anticipating a little bit of backlash or, or hatred because otherwise we wouldn't have uh, you know, the groups that we have now talking about. In, in terms of um, 
racism in yeah. football as well. How much progress do you think we are actually making in, in, in that regard? Uh, well, I just got racially abused last night by one of my own fans, which we just we just put up on, on Instagram like at half 11 and what time is it now? It's nearly 12, or quarter past 12, half 12. So yeah, so an hour ago, we've just come with that. Um, progression, don't believe we are making too much progression, to be honest, because if I ask you now, what's, what's the rules if someone's racist towards me? What's the fine? What's the ban? What's the, what's the implication? I mean, I, I, it seems like it changes regarding, with regards to every case. There you go then. But if, if somebody is um, wearing a, a betting pair of boxers, like... Uh, Nicholas Bentner. Yeah. You remember the fine for that of 60,000. But you're able to do it. Like if, I, if for anything else, if, if you're, if you're uh, homophobic, if you, are, if you fight on a pitch, whatever it might be, there's a set guideline of these are what the principles of what we look at with race, somehow we're still not. We've done all of this talking, all this taking a knee, oh, we all want to be helping and inclusive. There's still not a rule in place. What, why do you think that is? Because it doesn't affect the people at the FA, does it? When you look at the board and it's all 60-year-old white people, it doesn't really affect them, does it? So why would we want to change that? Why is there a need to change that? Ivan Tony's been, have been abused, what, I think eight times he's publicly come out. Who's calling in from the FA? When you're a Birmingham City fan yeah. yourself, playing for the club as yeah. well. No, but it's not. It's yeah. nothing to do with football at this point, because there's so many things you can call me. I got a big head. I'm shit at football, fat, fucking old, retired, whatever you want to do. When you have to put black cunt in front of it, now what does that? What does that have to do with football? And that's what we try and do. We try and dilute it in a way that oh, it's football. Oh, they lost the game, so they're emotional. Well, I'm emotional most days. I don't turn around and call you whatever slur with, with white in front of it. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. It's like people try and, 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 and tarnish it. And uh, yeah, like it's, obviously it's a little bit raw for me because this only happened to me, what, 12 hours ago? So um, it's a little bit like, okay, I'm still in a space of like embarrassment, shock, and obviously anger because there's an old person inside of me that wants to kick people's fucking head in, but we won't do that. Troy, it's been an absolute pleasure having you with us today. Uh, thanks very much for your time, man. All the best for the rest of the season and with season two of Dini Talks. Thank you very Appreciate much, buddy. Thanks Appreciate very much, it. mate. Thank you for Appreciate your time. It.